few design-related talks. For the first one, please welcome uh, Jakub, who will talk to us about the beautiful GNOME icons. Thanks. Um, uh, so, for those who don't know me, my name is Jakub Steiner, and I always run late with my talks. So, uh, it's not much of a talk. I've been trying for the past few years to do like these more high-level talks, but uh, to get better at those, but eventually you realize that some things you're just not going to get better. So uh, I'm coming back to my roots and doing a demo, which uh, if you've been to Emanuele's talk, he mentions it's always a disaster, so welcome to uh, the disaster. Uh, that is uh, the, the icon design workflow in 2019. So, uh, as you may have uh, noticed in the past release, we've kind of revamped the application uh, design guidelines and the way that we think application icons should look like. This is the old style where we focused on how things look. And uh, uh, the problem was that uh, uh, creating application icons, the identity of an application, was fairly tedious. LAPO did not come this year, so... Um, you know, I can I can tell you that it's very tedious. He would he would uh, try to uh, oppose that notion because it's only just a couple of yeah, and then you're two weeks in and you're still tweaking the thing. Um, so uh, it came to be like we we presented the icons at multiple resolutions because like there were places where we presented application icons and they had to be sharp, so we had to pixel perfect all those sizes. And it's all fine and dandy if that's like all you're doing, but uh, you end up having you know stale identity once you uh, design an application icon that, that matches your. Uh, I mean that 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 uh, is sufficiently well executed. You never touch it because like you don't want to you don't want to go through the process of redoing everything from scratch. So that was like how things look. So we. Uh, we try, or at least I, I tried, like to simplify the workflow and went the wrong way. Sometimes you gotta go the wrong way before you realize that that you know th th there's a right way. So I tried to go uh, the 3D uh, workflow where you would just get uh, a 3D model first and then then worry about the low resolution later. Um, but unfortunately, for that workflow, I even lost the the other guy that was doing any application icon, which was Lapo. So, um, so last year, or maybe it was earlier than that, um, um, some young designers joined the community and uh, like shook things up a little, and uh, and we uh, kind of got onto a path of doing these uh, redesign the the guidelines and and focus on having application icons that are geometric and vivid and uh, more contemporary because like we're not living in a in a contained world and there's third party applications and and stuff has happened there so we kind of um, matched up of what was happening around us but that's just like uh, what we did but my talk here is going to be about the tools that we use um, because um, you know we've we still depend on on our ancient tools like um, Inkscape and GIMP and all these design tools that have been around for for ages. But what I'm gonna show you here, hopefully, um, are the new tools that that we're using to make this easier. So the main main goal for the whole redesign wasn't to make uh, things pretty and make things contemporary, it was to make it easier uh, to actually, uh, for an app developer or a designer linked to an app developer to get uh, a really nice application icon uh, that doesn't involve you know, using tools like this. Um, uh, so um, we, uh, we set up we had one hackfest in Berlin that was focused on nailing the style and, you know, coming up with the, with the the core 
elements that you need to be able to produce application icons like the palette and all the guidelines about um, uh, the perspective and the grid and things like that. But then um, we had another one um, early this year in Berlin and I, because I'm going to be running out of time, so why not waste some more time uh, showing you a little video that I edited from that uh, event. So you may have noticed <laughs> the the event took place in in Berlin, um, and there's been a uh, it's been not just a designer hackfest uh, design fest, uh, but uh, you saw some of the young developers that helped to create some of the tools that that uh, I'm going to demo in this session, hopefully. Um, and I'm going to focus on the one that's on the right here, um, which is called um, Icon Preview. Uh, but one of the one of the steps that I'm going to like skip over is the the, the sketching phase, um, where um, we also prepared some of the templates. So apart from the color palette that you're going to use. We have a repository I'm going to show you at the end of the talk where you will find all the assets that, uh, that you can use. Um, so we have templates. Um, you can see this is the, the essential grid for the icons. Um, you, you may, worth noting is that it's not like vertically uh, centered. Uh, who would guess why we're using the baseline alignment rather than having vertically centered icons. Well, it's, it's because like we're presenting the, the applications along with their name, uh, uh, you know, with, with the label under it, and it looks way better if there's not uh, you know, varying white space on the vertical axis. Um, so these templates are available, like on the left you see we have like a um, paper sheet where you can use a pencil and paper. We have a template for uh, uh, for my paint, and I'm guilty myself of uh, using 
like, I don't know if I should be admitting, but I'm using other tools as well. Because um, <laughs> last time somebody like saw just a, a photo of my Apple keyboard attached to, you know, my Linux workstation. Uh, I got, I got, uh, you know, roasted on Twitter. For, for <laughs> so I don't know. Um, so while uh, this thing is playing, uh, I'll reposition, hopefully even with the audio. So can you still hear me? If I'm sitting like this, I mean, it's, it's a little awkward because I'm sitting in these drawers in between my legs, but uh, it's way easier for me to be drawing on a flat surface than tilted over there. So, um, demo time. Uh, I have um, Builder running here, but the tool that I'm going to uh, show you is called Icon Preview. Historically, um, it's been used for just previewing um, the icon in different contexts and um, you know sizes because we really want this to be way more simple than it used to be. So we have one icon that f fits all sizes and all contexts. Uh, we're doing it by uh, you know um, applying different styles depending on the uh, background. We're doing it by really simplifying the icon and making sure that it looks decent when it's scaled at like 32 pixels. And this tool really helps. Like initially I wasn't convinced that this is gonna be as key as it is right now, but it really helps. But uh, I'll go through the whole workflow creating an icon rather than you know previewing something you've already done. So let's just start uh, by creating a new, oh my God, of course this surface is not gonna be good. So it's gonna be a really terrible, terrible icon. Now I need to remember what I wanted to do for an icon. So I got, I got the sketches prepared and because we only have like quarter an hour, I'm gonna go with something simpler. So initially I wanted to do uh, recipes here but I think it's got too many things so I have a fallback plan and that is uh, the banner viewer thing so we're probably not gonna like this isn't the, the, the main um, emblem is something that we're not gonna go for so I'm just gonna do the, the main banner and I forgot how it's called. So the first thing we need is to know, okay, yeah, because it's, so the first thing we need is to know the, the ID of the applications. We have wonderful thing called FlatHub. Oh, it doesn't, ha, ah, yeah, okay, never mind. We have wonderful thing called GitLab. <laughs> GitLab. <laughs> and then Bilal, and then, because uh, it's a very it's a very fresh application. This guy, big shout out. He's he's producing applications like, you know, we used to have people producing extensions. So we're in a good place, and he's uh, he's rocking. And one of the apps that he made for me was uh, was Banner Viewer. But how do you uh, personal projects and. I'm, I'm just gonna lie. I don't know what its what its app ID is, but I'm gonna lie. So let's just do org gnome banner viewer. All right, and we're gonna create it. And we're gonna use Inkscape to actually edit it. But what you saw in the background here is the app that I'm demoing, and that's uh, because it. Let, let let's go back to actually creating something before we demo it so what what you get is a template and this is where your where your application icon will live 
Um, we also require now to have a symbolic, just a black and white uh, shape for the accessible theme and other things. But we also provide um, we provide sample um, application icons, so you you have a you know um, it's much easier to start from something rather than uh, rather than uh, a blank slate. Um, I'm going to start by importing my sketch. Uh, so I'll create a sketch. I'm going to make it uh, multiply because it's on white and the white will be transparent and I can just uh, see things under it. Uh, I'm going to import things from uh, Dropbox, uh, Talks, Quadec 2019, Media Sketches, and Banner Designer. Better viewer. Okay, there we go. Some weird questions it's asking me. No idea. Okay, and I think it's like 200. Nope. 200. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna wing like uh, usually you would spend time aligning things but we don't have the time so I'm just gonna wing it and do all the things that you're not supposed to okay so I'm gonna do some quick shapes um, the the thing the, the, this new style is completely different from what we used to do like I would be just uh, you know enjoying all the shading and adding of the detail but this really makes you wanna mainly stick to the grid, use very simple geometric shapes and all the things that I can't do. And so it's not, it's, it's easier, but like you gotta get into the uh, flow of things. So I'm just gonna use exact measurements, which is something I never do. <laughs> and things like that, it's horrible. <laughs> okay, so we have this little rounding at the bottom, so I'm gonna cut the, the bottom shape so it's easier. Uh, it's like Boolean operations in Inkscape, so you select two objects and then the one that's on top of the other one cuts through the one at the bottom and the shortcut is contr control minus. And then we're gonna do this and so I can, okay, so we're, we're gonna use like some guiding, guiding objects, something I would never do before this style. Uh, so it's 12 pixels, which is correct. I'm gonna use some um, okay, why do we have the grid above it? I'm going to put it below it. Okay. And we'll just color it differently so I see. Well, that's not what we see. Okay. Um, so the bottom part, I'm just going to do a quick path, hopefully. Like this, this is probably also a demonstration why, why my posture is like this, like an old man. Because like you're dealing with pixels and all you do is just lean over the thing all the time. It's horrible. Whoops, did not want to do that. Okay, so. Uh, before this style, like I would not be touching this this grid uh, toolbar like you can see all these toggles and I still don't want to half of them done so what you do is you click all of them and once it starts doing what you want that's that's what you that's what you use <laughs> okay but I'm gonna show you something um, you know like I'm demoing the new tool but I'm also gonna show you a bit of Inkscape oh my god like 10 minutes 
Um, so, um, historically, I would just enjoy my artistry using um, a Boolean um, a path, a Bezier path, sorry. So, like, you, you define the smoothness, you try to use as few nodes as possible to get a nice curved um, surface. But Inkscape, well, of course, they do it in, like, you would expect it to be a tool, but it's not. It's a path effect called Spiro Splines, which um, we're going to use for this. So I'm just going to, because we don't have enough time, I'm not going to demo it. I'm just going to do it. Um, so we want to have like this this shape going uh, around the circle. I'm just gonna go do a quick uh, like a node, um, like a bezier thing, which is horrible, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna use some bright color so we see it, and I'm gonna uh, get rid of the stroke, and I'm gonna get rid of the sketch. So. It's also good, like, if you just want to get a hint of what you want to do, just, like, lower the opacity of the sketch. But at this point, I'm just going to get rid of it. So this is horrible. Like, you would have to tweak it. But there's the the path effect. The only thing I'm worried about is losing work, so I'm going to save it. Um, and there's a Spyro, Spyro Spline add. All right. And... The thing it does is all the nodes that, that you have on the path are fixed, but everything else in between them is computed to be like as curvy and nice as it's possible. So what you like it, it does a little outline of where your path is, it's completely irrelevant. All all that's relevant are the points. So you do the opposite of what you would be doing with uh Bezier curves and that's add more nodes to just control where the path is going so we're just like tweaking it that way so we'll we'll add whoops we'll add one more node here and I'll, I'll probably not gonna I'm just gonna do some basic shading now uh, to get something going. Uh, we're going to keep doing it the Bezier way here, the old old fart way. So I'm just going to do it this way, this way, and I'm just going to nuke this one, and there's one below it. I'm going to nuke that one. So this one I'll make dark, and we'll shade it a little, and to do that, we're going to use a linear, nope, I'm in the stroke, linear gradient, and then add a few nodes here, 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 and here. Come on. And then like slightly darker here. And I would, we would do the same thing here, probably. I'm not gonna spend. It's it's so bad with this table that I'm just gonna leave it flat. But you would shade it like usually. We have the Z depth, something that's raised. We do all the shading. The flat surfaces we we kind of keep flat. I'm just gonna do one minute. Okay, so it's it's excellent. I have one minute to show you the the cool stuff so this is I'm gonna hide all the all the nasty things uh, I should have added the symbolic as well to demo that but this is the great this is the great tool so this is the previewing part not only can you check whether I'm on the grid which is now the case but I can also see the icon in the context context of other icons I can actually refresh this to have another uh, set of icons. Um, it's also being displayed on different backgrounds. You can see that there's a shadow being being rendered. That's how we render the app icon in on light backgrounds. Um, 
but this experimental uh, build that uh, Julian is is working on also has this this great thing and that's exporting uh, one of the things that we wanted with the new style is to be able to because we have now flat back and the ability to run nightlies or development version of applications alongside with your stable application it's sometimes like tricky to launch the right one if you have both of them running at the same time so um like when i did the builder icon i went with the 3d and just like do it. yeah we, we can do like alternative versions but nobody's gonna like they, they just want a nightly build quickly so now we have a tool to give to developers to be able to generate a a nightly and to this day i'm amazed that whatever we're doing that it works because uh because uh, we did it like for, for when we were investigating the style, we did it on the web using CSS and you know drawing uh, a, a gradient and mask it with the alpha channel of the of the. I'm out of time by the way, but uh, I just want to show you. This is actually like draw, drawing. Uh, you know, this is still a scalable app icon that can be rendered um, at any size. And you get it for free. You just click a button to export the 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 icon, and you got it. Um, the application also does um, things like uh, because like the workflow um, and the style allows a very fast um, you know iteration and doing different kinds of variants. So. It also allows you to export. This is still screenshots, but but now it actually has a screenshot functionality. So it it uh, we don't have a sharing pattern yet. <laughs> that's that's easy to use, but it all at least creates a screenshot of the icon in the context of other icons. So when you're discussing it with the maintainers of the application, you you're giving them the you know uh, the icon presented in a really nice context so they get a better idea of where you're heading with with the with the style so uh, that's my talk ladies and gentlemen um, if you have any questions you have minus <laughs> five minutes um, any questions <laughs> By the way, the other tool that we're working on, uh, I wanted to present it here, but it's not ready yet. But there's a, another uh, icon-related tool that uh, Bilal is working on, and um, I'll probably be able to show it. I know, I know. I know. So, sorry. <laughs>